Greg Wilbur is a metal sculptor who speaks the language of copper. Using the ancient techniques of metal raising, he can create works like this from a single disc of copper merely by hammering and heating. He's taken over a project started by Daryl Richardson. He beat this, a shape that was close to this out, and then got tired of it. So I took over on it and uh, made it look like me a little more. And then I'm trying to figure out a way to, well, I found a way by just penetrating here to use this pronghorn or an antelope. And this, I'm so right now I'm trying to decide, okay, this, this thing here is sort of ugly, but if that's how he laid it, that might be interesting in the forest. And then it'll be pinned. And this, this sort of seems like some kind of a, like a bloodletting tool or something. Blacksmith Adrian and I are working on this. This is a very heavy copper sheet that we pierced with a chisel. And now we're kind of exploding it out. So it has the potential of having this very much further out. So that's one of the deals with metal. You can kind of, metal's kind of never done. Planish, anneal. I am learning a new language. My body remembers the way copper rings in the sun, the heft of the hammer, the pinch of the vice. Ball peen, stake. Select a sheet of copper. The weight is up to you. Cut it with tools like scissors. Alligator jaws tamed just enough. They will only take your finger off if you are careless. Discover the awkwardness of right angles, the impossibility of an acute. Crease the metal. Lay the piece over a notch in the stump. Begin the groove that becomes a fold. Let the welding hammer blaze the trail. Diligently fold the copper over itself. Tap gently. Make it become something you are thinking about. Give it enough space to still be itself. Deliver it to the fire. Heat will make it malleable. Now it gives like it wants to move, wants to become something else. So help it out. Take the hammer and pound, carefully, with focus. This is not a half-assed procedure. This is serious, and it's not, for it's hide and seek and run, rabbit, run. But mostly it is a beginning, the shape of a mouth finding its tongue. Learn burnish, file, patina, quench, speak copper. Greg Wilbur's vessels possess such an elegance and purity of form that sometimes people have a hard time figuring out what they're made of. Clay, baskets, I've heard it all, and leather. You can't really quite tell what the material is, but you want to touch it, you want to hold it. And that touching and holding is something that, that Greg really capitalizes on. Well, what I do is a forging process. Um, it's called raising in English. I squish, hammer, form out of flat sheets of metal. Um, I don't do any welding or soldering. Everything from one piece of metal, I've stuck with that um, concept for 25 years now, thinking of it as sort of a Zen concept. This was a piece of metal probably around in this area here. And there, I don't know how many hammer blows, but a lot. Um, you know, I would, at least a half a million. I'm sure of it. I think the reason that I 
I'm intrigued by this is just that it seems so impossible. Raising is an ancient craft developed over thousands of years in Korea, China, and Japan. The process is rarely practiced in the West because of the devotion and physical stamina it requires to create these deceptively complex works. I hold the piece of metal on the stake, strike just behind where it comes in contact with the stake, and that little area, knock it down. Turn it a little bit and knock it down. Go around in concentric circles. The rule of thumb is to, once you've hit an area, you don't hit it again. And the piece has to go towards this imaginary point out in front of me. In a process called necking over, Greg urges the metal up and around. And then using hammers, he will ask that metal to occupy a smaller amount of space than it occupied on the outside diameter. So that top lip might be very, very small. And because he's asked that metal to occupy a smaller space, it's actually thicker at the top lip than it is than the, from the metal that he started with. And you can feel it, actually. When you hold a piece, you can actually feel the tension of that metal in the piece. There's an energy there that's transferred by every hammer blow that he puts in. And then he does a whole series of dippers that are um, kind of long, tenderly pieces with small pots on the end. This is sort of my signature pieces, these dippers. And um, I really like doing them. They're, they're fun for me. They're, everyone's different. Well, this, this was my first course of raising. Um, once the... Uh, the uh, metal is struck, it becomes pretty um, stiff and can become brittle. So I would be quitting at this point. Then there's a, a process called annealing, which is heated with most any type of, of heat source. I use a propane torch um, and heat it up to around 1,000 degrees or just when you can first see some uh, red. And then it's cooled. It can either be quenched or air cooled. And that takes all that tension out of the metal. And then when it's cooled, you're going to do the process over again. Depending on its size, Greg goes through 20 to 50 cycles of hammering, annealing, and quenching to complete a piece. In his workshop, he has a model that shows the process step by step from start to finish piece. I use this as a teaching aid. This would be the very first stage of hammering, and this would be the last, but this particular example. So you can fit it in there, you can see how this Maybe you can see it. it comes up and squishes back through. And he also does this series of wall pieces that are really interesting. They almost are in a wreath format. Um, and we have one in the gallery currently that's like that. Um, and that's a really interesting format too because it really plays with the negative and the positive space on a wall, which is a way that we don't usually get to see metal. Greg is a great example of the kind of artist who has spent a lifetime immersing himself in understanding how one particular material works. I guess that's what I think that uh, what art is, is you're, you're trying to break new ground, um, and that's what I've tried to do. This is a very, very specialized skill, and actually Greg is one of the few people around today in the States who is able to make metal act this way. So it's a very magical thing to have him here in Portland, and it's a marvelous opportunity to see an ancient type craft we interpret it in a very contemporary way. This is just what I've been doing for a long time. And now I'm approaching 60. It was a little easier at 30. So I'm hopefully better at it and know my limitations. I don't know what else I'd do at this point. <laughs> <laughs>